possible. And according to our uh, estimates, they should be hitting the water just about uh, 147 hours even. If and when we get some intelligible calm, we'll come back up on the line. This is uh, Apollo Control Houston standing by. Well, Man Space Center, Paul Haney, who is the voice we've been listening to there, uh, says that he's, they're having communication difficulty, and you heard some of the noise level in the background. Uh, so there is no confirmation that the chutes have opened. The spacecraft did successfully weather that terrible heat of re-entry. It made it right down the corridor. It uh, apparently is uh, coming in pretty close to target. We've had no information that uh, it is not. This is Apollo Control Houston. 146 hours, 58 minutes. Recovery two within the last minute. As reported, they have a flashing light in sight, and they followed that with, we have voice contact with the crew. I repeat, they said we have voice contact with the crew at 146 hours, 58 minutes. That would seem to indicate that... Uh, We're going to try to patch that conversation into our uh, consoles here. Right now, we've not heard it. It would seem to indicate that the chutes are open because if they had not opened, the plunge to Earth would have been so rapid that by now they would have impacted, uh, hit the Pacific Ocean. Uh, as the, it is, uh, voice contact, lookout, they must be floating. A lookout on the Yorktown now reports a visual sighting. They must be close at hand. The helicopter nearest them is piloted by Lieutenant Kenneth Owen of Pensacola, Florida. Let's go to uh, the Yorktown uh, with Ron. I uh, have been in uh, forces. Uh, the spacecraft has been seen on uh, on radar, and uh, the last. It's going to land 5,000 yards from the Yorktown. Is the word that now comes from the spires. Saw the spacecraft coming down. The aircraft brightly descending toward the surface of the Pacific. It's now 5,000 yards. It's about this surface of the water, almost exactly on schedule at 4:51 a.m. Four minutes, four hours, 51 minutes. 50. Yorktown time. The spacecraft heading down toward the surface of the Pacific, a perfect landing, 5,000 yards from the carrier, and that certainly is the closest. In the history of space flight, the uh, was the atmosphere very slowly, should be on the surface right about now, about 5,000 yards uh, to port and slightly astern of the aircraft carrier Yorktown. And there comes one of the helicopters. We can see its bright uh, blinking red light in the uh, Pacific night sky heading over toward the scene. And any minute now, that helicopter will be dropping smoke bombs, smoke markers on the uh, surface of the Pacific. All the time comes to drop the swimmers. Now back to Ron Nesson. The American. And so that makes the accuracy uh, even more. miles an hour when it hit the water, which is a pretty good jump. Uh, the three down in entry or by the jolt of hitting the water at about 17 miles an hour. And also the legs of the couches were built with shock absorbers.
away somewhat and absorb the shock. Well, now that they are back and safe and very close to the aircraft carrier Yorktown, the uh, actual recovery of the men, the three men, and of their uh, capsule is beginning. Number three elevator is, uh, is being raised. This is the elevator that the astronauts will ride down on to the sick bay, which is over there, once they're aboard and have gone through a very brief welcoming ceremony. The general idea of the rescue, and it's still dark outside, the sun won't be up here for another uh, 30 or 35 minutes, and uh, the aircraft carrier officers don't like to have the uh, white lights, either their own white lights or the uh, television white lights turned on because it interferes with the ability of helicopter and airplane pilots to see in the dark. So the lights on the deck have to be kept off during this period. But the general idea of the rescue is that uh, one of the helicopters uh, carrying three frogmen will approach the spacecraft, or is approaching the spacecraft right now, and uh, we'll hook up a sea anchor, we'll hook the flotation collar around, and then we'll take the men out. And Dallas Townsend is up on the flight deck where he can uh, see all this taking place uh, better than I. Dallas? Well, we've lost our signal to the uh, uh, Yorktown for the moment. That is likely to happen. It's rather remarkable we've got pictures at all, uh, I think. The uh, whole uh, space uh, age and its communications uh, are almost uh, baffling to us. But out there, a thousand miles southwest of Hawaii, that signal from the Yorktown is being re relayed to a Pacific satellite and eventually to you in your homes. The spacecraft, the Apollo 8, is back. And what a remarkable trip and a remarkable conclusion to it. After 5,700 mile, 570,000 mile trip over six days, the spacecraft has landed within two and three quarter miles of the character carrier and may be a lot closer than that to its actual impact point because the carrier was not under the impact point. It had to be off at the side because the accuracy of these American spaceships is so great on re-landing. CBS News color coverage of the flight of Apollo 8 will continue in a moment. Apollo 8 has ended uh, up to this point as perfectly as it began. We have not heard yet whether the spacecraft is upright in the water, however. That could be the one uh, uh, malfunction so far, but it's rather anticipated uh, by the <coughs> space people. Uh, the spacecraft can either float upright in the water with its nose up and the pilots uh, sitting in their normal fashion, uh, lying down on the couch with their heads up, or it can, as indeed uh, in the earlier two landings of Apollo uh, spacecraft, uh, have duck down with the nose in the water. In that case, they release three flotation bags which bring the nose upright. That can take anywhere from four minutes to 12 minutes or so. And this crew, in, in testing uh, spacecraft out in the Gulf beyond Houston, uh, have taken 12 minutes. In that case, there would be no communication uh, for those 12 minutes because all of the antennas and the beacons or so forth are in the nose of the spacecraft. Ron Nesson aboard the Yorktown, let's listen in put their capsule on this uh, on this cart. Yes, well, Ron, Ron uh, from where I cannot get the position on the uh, ocean where the spacecraft is now. Uh, it may be that there's a temporary uh, loss of visibility because of what has been telling us and uh, so monotonously week or so. Visibility should be 10 miles. The uh, carrier's uh, loudspeaker system says that the spacecraft is visible on the port side, and I'm sure it is. It's just that from my position, I can't see it. We would expect that within 35 minutes, perhaps less than that, the uh, swimmers will be dropping to the uh, surface of the ocean. They'll be attaching the flotation collar and uh, around the spacecraft to, to keep it stable from sinking, of course. And uh, after that, two uh, six-man rubber life rafts will be dropped to them. 
Then the hatch will be uh, open, and the astronauts will emerge from the spacecraft and uh, clamber over the flotation collar into the life raft. Helicopter will lower a uh, basket to them, lower a basket to them, and uh, then they will be lifted up into the helicopter. Uh, we understand that uh, conditions are satisfactory with the command command module, and the strobe light is visible from the bridge of the Yorktown. The strobe light is that very bright, pulsating light, uh, which can be seen probably 10 miles, 10 more, 10 miles or so. One thing which causes that break.